Hello everyone, welcome back to day 30 of Polity Daily Drill. Let's begin. First question, with reference to the effects of financial emergency, financial emergency under Article 360, consider the following statements. There is no requirement to get the proclamation of financial emergency approved by the parliament. Now this is wrong. Why? Because you need to get the financial emergency approved in the parliament within how many months? Within two months by a simple majority. So one is wrong. Second one. The President may give directions for the reduction of salaries and allowances of the judges of the Supreme Court and the High Courts. This is absolutely true. Correct. So, second one is right, first one is wrong. Which of the statements is or are correct? B, 2 only. Moving on to question number 2. Consider the following statements about amendments to the DPSP in the Indian Constitution. The 86th Amendment Act of 2002 introduced Article 21A into the DPSP. Now, I think we have spotted the error here. 86th Amendment Act is correct. Introduced 21A is correct, but not in DPSPs. In Fundamental Rights, Part 3, not Part 4. So, one is wrong. Coming to number 2. Article 47 of the DPSP which urges the state to raise the level of nutrition and the standard of living and to improve public health was enhanced by the 73rd Amendment to include provisions for promoting the consumption of nutritious food. No, this is absolute nonsense. The 73rd Amendment Act gives effect to a different DPSP which is Article 40, Local Self-Governance, Panchayats. So, two is also wrong. The third one, the 97th Act of 2011 included the promotion of cooperative societies within the ambit of DPSP. This is correct. So, which of the statements is correct? D, three only. Moving on to question number three. Consider the following statements. Statement one, under Article 32, every person has a right to directly move to the Supreme Court for the enforcement of their property rights. Now, we all know that after the 44th Amendment Act of the year 1978, a right to property is no longer a fundamental right. It has been made into a legal right, at best a constitutional right under Article 300 capital A. This means you don't have the right to directly approach the Supreme Court. So, one is wrong. If one is wrong, we know the answer. Statement 1 is incorrect and statement 2 has to be correct. D will be the answer. Let's read statement 2. The right to property is a legal right available to every person. Absolutely correct. Moving on to question number 4. Consider the following organizations or bodies in India. The National Law Commission, Goods and Services Tax Council, Commissioner for Linguistic Minorities and the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights. How many of the organizations given above is or are constitutional bodies? Of course, the Law Commission is a non-statutory executive body, right? So, this is wrong. GST Council, yes. Article 279 capital A provides for a GST Council's establishment and also Commissioner for Linguistic Minorities. This is mentioned under Article 350 capital B, Special Officer for Linguistic Minorities. And the fourth one, NCPCR is wrong because it is again a statutory body, right? Meaning a legal body formed under CPCR Act of the year 2005. So, 1, no, 2, yes, 3, yes, and 4, no. So, how many bodies? Only 2 bodies. B is the right answer. And the last question for today, the fifth one. Consider the following statements regarding the inherent rationale of local self-governance in India. 
Local self-governance is intended to promote participatory democracy by empowering citizens to have a direct role in decision-making process that affect their daily lives and community well-being seems to be correct. The establishment of local self-governance institutions is solely for administrative convenience and has no bearing on enhancing democratic values or community participation in governance. Now, has no bearing would be wrong completely. It does have a bearing on enhancing the democratic values. We say that the local self-governance is the best school of democracy. So, two is incorrect. The third one, one of the objectives of local self-governance is to improve the efficiency of public service delivery by leveraging local knowledge and resources, thereby contributing to overall development and governance quality. This is correct. So, how many statements are correct? 1 and 3. B. Only 2 is the right answer. That brings us to an end of our discussion for today. Let's meet tomorrow. Till then, that's all for me. Jai Hind.